Hey everyone, this is Jay Clark from Fargo 3D Printing. Uh, we are with Eric over here at Airwolf, the uh, co-founder, um, and we're actually going to be talking about the Evo uh, 3D printer. So this just announced, correct? That's correct. Yesterday at CES. Perfect. So can you tell me a little bit about what uh, is all about the Evo? Like, what is it printing now? Kind of, uh, um, and just maybe show us like a little bit of the touch screen. Sure. So we actually call this an additive manufacturing center. Uh, we're we're trying to get away from that word 3D printing because it's just so much more than what we've traditionally associated with 3D printing. It has, uh, the Evo is a clean sheet design, designed entirely in-house. Uh, it has a aluminum frame. It's all linear guide motion system, oversized stepper motors, one piece steel bed. And it has, one of the things we're most proud about is of course our user interface. It has the ability through touch to control virtually every aspect of the printer. Temperatures, speeds and feeds, generally things that professional users want to work with. It is extremely fast, it's capable of going over 200 millimeters a second, uh, mostly due to the very rigid motion system and also because of the, the touchscreen interface and the fact that we built our own circuit board. So it has a completely custom and proprietary uh, way of, of running the machine, but it will still accept standard G-code. So you can run it through your Repeteers, your Curos, and still run the machine. Although we do have a new version of Apex coming out. So we have a, a wonderful set of options on the touchscreen. You can actually unplug the power from this machine, plug the power back in at a later time, and the print will start where it left off. Yeah. And that's really, uh, for us, it's a game changer because we do an extraordinary amount of printing at our shop in Costa Mesa. And what would happen is every now and then you'd have a power outage and you'd just lose every print. <laughs> like and, we just had at CES earlier today? Yeah, just like at CES, <laughs> right. And rather than buying you know, 40 backup power supplies, it's a lot easier just to plug the machine back in and picks up where it left off. Also, if you have a filament jam of some type, you can actually come back to the printer later and through the restore function, Position the head to where the print left off, hit print, and it will pick up at that line of G code uh, that it missed and start the print all over again. So when, when you actually go to send a print to the printer, does it actually just send all that G code right to the printer then? Yes, it sends all of it. And you'll notice there's no drive in here anymore because after it's sent, you can pull the drive out. Perfect. It's, al and, go it, ahead. it's also connected to uh, Wi-Fi through the settings here. So we've... Right now, I don't know if we're connected, but we have all the options to connect. We have a keyboard that will populate on here, right here to enter all your information. You can also manually enter G-code into this machine like a professional CNC. So if you need to diagnose anything, we've got a ton of options in here too. Uh, diagnostics, we can figure out where the four auto leveling points are, how level the actual bed is before it does the auto leveling. This machine, like the Axiom, automatically levels and calibrates for you before you use it. So we're really focusing on more professional features. It'll also tell you how many hours it's been running at what temperatures, so we know and so a user knows kind of what's reasonable for the life of things like nozzles and brushes and you know consumables. And it also has a, a heated chamber, correct? It does. It has a heated chamber, and the control for the chamber is right here. So we can vary it all the way up to realistically about 70 C. And is this, um, like you can change all these settings while it's printing as well? Certainly, we can do this right on the fly. Like right there, I just changed the setting for the chamber to 46, and it'll pick that up in a little bit. Cool. And so what are you printing right now, material-wise? I was hoping you'd ask that. <laughs> So right now we're printing a revolutionary material for a desktop 3D system. It is 316 stainless steel. Okay. And then you go after the process, then you go and you get that professionally centered then? Yeah, there's three stages to the process. The first one here is generally the green stage where we're going to make the part that's um, in a, it's in like a traditional 3D print type of form. It's, it's got a little bit of a polymer in there. Then you'll ship that part to a professional sintering house, one that uh, preferably processes metal injection molded parts. They will first debind it, and then the second phase of that will be a sintering. And that sintering is when all the, the metal molecules will, will bond together tightly. And you get about a 19% uh, percent shrinkage rate on the material. So you'll design your parts, generally you'll scale them a little higher to get the accurate fit. Very similar to how they make metal injection molding. Very cool. 
Um, and so when will this product actually uh, be shipping? Is it shipping now? Is it going to be a little bit later in, 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 in the spring of 2018? Well, our target is February okay. of 2018, so that's relatively quickly. We already have plenty of prototypes running in the shop. We do an extensive amount of testing, and we may want to make sure this machine is absolutely perfect for everybody before it goes out to them. And is, so is this, like, you know, with the advanced settings, is this more geared towards, you know, the manufacturing and the engineers types, but yet, um, you know, how do you um, kind of uh, work with the education market on that realm? Well, we have a number of different printers. Uh, for education, uh, we have, uh, over 500 schools that have our Axiom line of printers. And, and that was last year, correct? When you, or the year before that you announced that? Year before. And it's a very uh, durable, safe, enclosed printer. Starts at $3,000. Yes. And But we anticipate a lot of community colleges and colleges having at least one copy of this printer to make the more advanced prints with the more advanced materials. Like this one will do polycarbonate, for example, at 300C. It'll also do, of course, the metal, like we're demonstrating. And then you guys also uh, like pre-test all the materials and verify them. Is that correct? We do. We have a new version of our Apex software coming out in February as well. It's called Apex Pro, and it will have all of the predefined settings for the materials built into it. Things like nozzle temp, bed temp, speeds, retraction amounts, chamber temperatures, etc. Perfect. And so. You have this car <laughs> that, that, that's in your booth. We're, we're, we're going to do this. So tell me a little bit about different aspects of the car and, like, why is it here? <laughs> well, besides, it looks, it looks awesome. Just because it's a cool car. Uh, and I'm a big car guy. That's actually why I started the company was to, to make my own car. And so I had to build a 3D printer at that time back in 2012 because I, I couldn't buy one that would actually make, like, real parts. And so cars have always been a big passion of mine. This actually is my wife's personal car. She's graciously <laughs> let us, you know, <laughs> hack it up. <laughs> so. I bet you that conversation over the kitchen table is great. Like, hey, honey, can I borrow your car? We're going to do this. Uh, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it has a number of 3D printed parts in it. And that's, that's really why we brought it to the show. It has uh, um, seat adjustment levers, uh, a redesigned center console for her phone. And, and keys, it has grab handles up in the headliner. And one of the parts I really like the best about it is the front end. Okay. So we did a lot of nice subtle touches, kind of like what a car customizer would do to, the, to, a, to a car. We brought this car to SEMA and it was a really big hit because those guys love to customize cars. So we customized the vents on the hood, the intake right here. These, and what material? These are all printed in ABS. And we've been driving this car almost every day since SEMA, and these parts hold up just fine. You know, standard ABS. And really, to print ABS well, you need a printer with an enclosed chamber to avoid the cracking issues, because you need them to be structurally sound. And so the Axiom was great for printing these parts. We printed this bigger one on the Axiom 20. We also printed the headlight scoops here. You can see these, add a little, little flare to the front end, the uh, Airwolf SRT logo. And then on the back, we printed out very aggressive ducktail style spoiler. And we made this in four pieces on the Axiom 20 right there. And actually, the Axiom 20 is making one of those pieces right now just to verify to people that we actually did do this. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do as like a post-processing with this? What was the steps to get it the way it looks now? Uh, that's a great question because you're right. I mean, it's it's smooth. It's like an automotive finish. We used ABS for this, and we sanded the ABS down and used some filler with it, and then we primed and we shot it. I think in a matte black to get this finish. So it did require some sanding to get it nice, but the the parts were remarkably similar to this to begin with. If you you know you, you have the right temperatures in the build chamber, yeah, and even on the back, uh, also one of the highlights of this car is the license plate. Now, I'd be lying if I told you that I took this off when I drive it on the street. You know, it's, it's a lot of work to take off a license plate. No, but, but it's got the yellow and black, uh, and it's, we even printed the, uh, the holder right here in, in dual color. So it's a very durable and kind of realistic looking license plate.
Well, very cool. Yeah, because I think I've seen this at a, at a couple shows that you guys have, have been at, and, and I don't think I've actually dove in and, and, and looked at it. So, um, well, yeah, is there anything else that you want to add about Airwolf, you know, uh, with 2018, you know, starting out here? Is there anything else that you want to share? Well, we're just really happy to be here at CES. I think uh, CES is a, is, a, is a great show. We have customers from all over the world that really have high expectations. And it's really nice to be here with a product that seems to meet a lot of their expectations. It's, it's really satisfying. It's been a long road, almost six years, and we're happy to be here. And we're happy to have made the friends we've had and to hopefully keep on marching strong in 2018 and really have metal printing take off on the desktop level. That's, that's really what we're looking forward to. Well, Eric, it's a pleasure talking with you today, and I hope you have a good rest of your CES. Thank you so much. Thanks.